and a big thanks and a shout out not that he needs it with 2,000 subscribers to Timber Surf Tim uh, he done a draw and I was lucky enough to be picked out as the winner of the competition uh, which was a £50 uh, voucher for Scale 3D which is a very good company that has had quite a bit of my patronage from uh, the number of boxes there so I've uh, not not spent too much time having a look on the site just to see uh, what I can add to my have to paint collection but um, yeah we'll wait wait and see I don't know I'll probably get in touch with you Tim actually just to find out how long that's valid for or whatever or whether I can use it in multiple uh, purchases or just has to be all in one hit but thanks anyway Tim and I think somewhere on a video I thanked a short while ago for I think 175 subscribers there's now 194 of you so thanks for subscribing there have been a few ups and downs along the way even if that's the wrong chart but never mind there we go uh, 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 two left just recently never mind hey ho bigger things to worry about than that but thanks for sticking with us Obviously it's going to be a long journey, but uh, we will get there. Well, as we move on to yet another week, and another little update. Uh, those last excerpts I showed you from the previous video with the Ann Corton door pack. I chose the uh, half glazed panel. The only disadvantage is obviously the door handle details are not on a opposing sides um, but I think I will probably fill them and you just not, you're not going to notice it's a low reef blah, 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 low relief model at the end of the day anyway so um, yeah they just marry up behind that door frame detail yeah, so they can go behind that paint it up white and then mucky them up somewhat I've just uh, lightly glued the two together to hold them and then the little sprue in between them I've cut in half and glued against the back of the doors which I've literally just done as I picked the camera up so you can't see the front detail but you've obviously got an idea from that so I will paint them and then a bit of glue and glaze and some glazing sheet and that will move this one on slightly, it was holding me up, coming up with a door idea. And uh, then we've just got to do something to dim the windows down so you don't just see nothingness in it. Whether I do the old tissue paper trick or something just to take your eye off it and then uh, put the hoarding along the front for the signage. Cut the sheet for the roofing and glue the caps on for the chimney pots and this one should be done thankfully and I can move on to its former identical twin well the doors have come in useful just got some thick glazing well just some packaging I think slightly thicker material than you normally get so it should brace those pieces at the top there. Not that it's going to be moved. But that just about fits in there. But for some reason, while I've been trimming and gluing this, I managed to detach both sides of the door frame. Must have been a juice and builder. So... My next move is just to unclamp these as it's been on 24 hours now. These were the roofing sheets I got from China. Which are a tad over scale as you can see but not, you know, not end of the world. I might try and see if they do another one that's slightly smaller but I think some of theirs they just tend to say whatever scale they think is most appropriate. But... Um, well, did well. I knew they were anyway, but uh, they're quite flexible. They don't shatter or split like some of the brittle plastics. So it was quite easy to cut the uh, flash piece off. 
and uh, the advantage with these if you were doing a longer building is um, they will fit flush as you can see they're pretty much invisible so if you wanted to trim the edge of a sheet off it's only the moulding at the bottom there if you've got that off so that you're open tiled like that across the whole sheet you could uh, just keep going by the time you sort of painted it up and weathered it you wouldn't see what little bit of the join you would detect anyway don't know how it's showing up on the camera but through the lens it's not very visible but we used the old trusty Marn reel and uh, trimmed her up and then a little bit of careful adjustment with a scalpel just to fit those in so I've just got to make a little bit of flashing of somehow or use some paste and then colour it lead colour and then just do a little edging down the sides pop the chimney caps on I've still got to paint those a terracotta colour then interior wise I'm just going to leave it for now until I know what situation it's going to be in and uh, obviously you know make a false back for it or something so it doesn't reflect the light through and uh, I've got to make the sign up because I've got the piece of wood that I trimmed from that laser kit left over to duplicate the other one over there but I don't possess a colour printer to make any signage or anything up, so a bit stuck there. But that's it for now, but I'm quite happy with this, the way this stuff came out. Progress on the little house, pub. I managed to get some fine modelling paste. I've got the coarse version. Mm. It's just cool. No, it's from Hobbycraft. Four quid for a tube. Um, and I painted that around the top of the brickwork to simulate lead flashing. And then painted it a dark grey to simulate lead. And I've glued my chimney pots that I made up. And again, the mortar around those is the coarse paste. And I haven't painted that, I'm going to weather the tiles, I might just leave those. But at the minute, and then just obviously do something with these. At the uh, appropriate time, so I've just got the top of the signage to do around the, the bay area. Which, again, I haven't got um, any way of stenciling or freehand painting is not my style, but We've got the name of the Indian restaurant and the right size font. We just need to transfer that onto the the front hoarding. So that will go up there. Very good, sir. Welcome to the Deli Belly. Do with a few more of those on the layout for the US style. Talking of which. Well, let's see if I end up swearing when I open this one. Hattons have a little bit better reputation though, don't they? Just. Well, another little, well, I could often say bargain and Hattons in the same sentence. I know some people do, but <clears throat> I don't seem to be. Why is it as soon as I talk, you open your pie hole? Yeah. A couple of these were £4 each and the rest of them were £5 each. Now you ain't going to get a bloody Hornby one for that, are you? The odd thing is some of them were kits, well they're all kits, assembled and painted up. Some of them were missing the chassis part or the bogies and chassis. So basically a body with a chassis or not, as the case may be. They want the same money. So obviously you ain't... Shut up! You ain't going to buy them over these so let's have a look yeah so 
makes you wonder why everything else can't be that price as well, really, doesn't it? These two are the only ones that were £4 for some reason. One of them, I mean, there were several others on there. I could have bought probably three times this amount if I'd not have basically cherry-picked the ones where the description didn't have an issue. But a couple of them, it says glue residue on sides. This is the one out of the box. I did wonder, you know, if they've got a big stack of these on a shelf, do they just take them at random? But they do put a code that corresponds to the one on the internet, so the item in it should correspond to the description. Um, I can't find what they're referring to. This looks just like the other one. There's no fingerprint of a bit of glue. I mean, to be honest, there isn't really anything to glue on these. You screw the chassis... Uh, well, the bogies to the chassis and the couplings, and click that in, and that's it. Then obviously you just do your decals and spray work. And I like this idea. I can't see why one of the manufacturers over here doesn't adopt it, or even someone say like Acura scale do it as a budget alternative to the more expensive detailed units and do this where you put it together yourself save a bit of production time in China you buy a blank molded body a precast chassis pre-made bogies and the rest is up to you you know the other one says chassis loose on body which I don't know whether it's this one or not but basically the tolerance on these they are a push fit and um, this one, you can, put, you know, it holds, but um, you can lift it out. But obviously, a little dob of a uh, rubbery copy dex type glue, or that what was the old stuff, the YooHoo type stuff, didn't quite go clear though, did it? I don't know why they don't paint the chassis when they put them together, but yeah, I'm quite pleased with them. Um, I mean, as I looked at three of them so far, um, I don't know whether to try and get a stencil and change these to Norfolk and Southern, which has obviously been a lot of work removing all that and changing them. And in fact, you can't get a Norfolk and Southern stencil in the UK, but you know, real one applies. Again, I've got the older style coupling on them. So I think what I'll do rather than go to the expense of changing all of them is obviously they're going to run in a rake so I'll just have the lead truck with an easy fitting on and the end one so it'll be compatible with the others. Well there's the kit form, obviously they got as far as doing the work on the body but um, just a die cast chassis, two bogies in your cup and you just paint it, screw them together. Bob is your uncle. Strangely, they priced that one at £5. There's another one in kit form at £5. The two that they thought had some kind of issue, £4, and the rest were all a fiver. So I've got what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11. Strange, I bought an odd number, but there you go. So, no further forward with the saga of my tank wagons. They are still there. I have repaired the two that had the bits broken off and I had the third one which had the snapped buffer bar I glued back on but that also had a broken part of the buffer which was missing so probably back at some stage it had got broken. But I did buy these as well. One's a US style tank, the walkway and everything's missing so and the piece round here is all broke off. It has got quite a nice weight to it. That's, it should look like that, but obviously a bit of thick plastic card or something, I probably could rebuild that end to some description. Don't know about the walkway and maybe there's been wire railing along the top, but that may may live another day. <coughs> but there was two, and the other one is, yes you guessed it, a Lima tanker. Unfortunately, it suffered the same fate of a, a broken piece on it. But the other one was intact, and I removed it carefully. 
and glued it on one of these. So I'm hoping the bloke's going to come through and eBay aren't now going to say, oh he hasn't packed off up, you've got to send them back. Now I friggin' repaired them. Should have waited. And a little topical infill here if any of the US guys are watching. I filled my van up um, because the fuel, huh, obviously the crisis at the minute. Uh, where is it? was currently 165, well 164.9, but obviously there isn't 0.9 of a pence, is there? At our local Sainsbury supermarket. Um, a few of my American friends were sort of commenting on the gas price in the US, and I said, well, I crunched the numbers at 8.75 US gallons for the litres I put in, which is $71.74 dollars. For fifty pounds, <clears throat> which equates to eight dollars twenty-four for a US gallon if you were filling up in the UK, and I think they're getting to the six. So you're catching us up, guys. 